we stay north of South Africa's borders. Tens of thousands of young white South African men fought in Namibia and Angola in the 70s and 80s as national servicemen. The so-called troopies on the border were used shamelessly by the government as a way of boosting white patriotism and a lager mentality, essential elements in the apartheid facade. But the price was heavy, too heavy. Apart from all the hundreds of lives lost, many former conscripts carry the scars of those wars to this day. This is a story of South Africa's days of playing regional military superpower in the late 80s, when the full might of the Defence Force was used in central and southwest Angola to defend UNITA against the onslaught of the Angolan government forces. It culminated in the now well-known confrontation of Quito Carnival in 1987. This is the story of a family who lost a son, but hasn't dealt with their loss. They wanted to tell their story but stay anonymous because some members of the family haven't even been told what exactly happened. This woman is the grandmother of a young man who joined the Army's Signals Corps when he was 17. He was sent to Namibia and from there to Angola. Against his will and in a Swapo uniform, he said. The things he saw there changed him forever. He told his family that he had become an empty shell and upon his return to civilian life, he wrote his story, calling it the diary of a dying man. Then he committed suicide. Now his grandmother feels that the words he had written should be heard. We were issued enemy uniforms, rifles, ammunition, weapon gear and transport. We were to tie yellow scarves on our shoulders to go, enemy or not. Major Dutoy was Operation Commanding Officer and Captain Ben Venter, Field Commanding Officer over Operation Modular. Infiltration deep into enemy territory disguised we attack. We attack where we can by total surprise, walk right up to them shouting, don't shoot, we are on patrol, we are one of us in Portuguese, and shoot the shit out of everything. We attack Huambo and the Benuela railway line. Big fuck up. Training camp turns out to be Typhoon rest camp. Shot the shit out of us. 230 dead, 800 wounded, 3 lost, presumed dead. Rough but almost correct estimate of our losses. A squadron Puma helicopters flew almost 14 hours non-stop to get us out. To go on again to Quito. Carnival. Do you know what it is like to fight 4,000 kilometers from home? The worst shit and you wonder why they go nuts? I have run, I have died, I have crawled, I have shot myself literally and truly. In all this time we went on, I wanted out. No, they say. His grandmother says that P.W. Boeta must release information on how many servicemen were killed during the war. It is a national duty to request and insist that the exact figures on fatal casualties, suicide, disabled and mentally disturbed national servicemen be released according to the Freedom of Information Act to be put on record in a book of remembrance. What hurts a lot is that we believed in the government. You know, that, that also hurts. We believed in them. Although they blame the white people, we didn't know. I, I still don't know. And I feel, I hope that Mr. Bota has mellowed and that he, he will be humble he will humble himself to, to cooperate. She lives with the memory of her grandson, with the pain she still sees in the eyes of those he left behind, and with the words he wanted them to remember him by. I hurt so, I can't cry anymore. It's, it's driving me insane. 
God help me, come down and speak my pain into people I love. Tell, tell them how I feel. Let them know I can't live like this. They say you have never lived until you have almost died. I have died on the 27th of October in 87. It's kind of funny to know that you will die in less than nine hours. Everything is different. It is as if your soul knows.